And uh, school is in session. Prepare yourselves for the school of Croc. Good morning, Crocodillies. We got an exciting episode of School of Croc for you guys today. Thank you so much to everyone that posted in our School of Croc Facebook group yesterday. I'm so sorry that I've been super busy with the news this morning. I haven't had a chance to post them to Gatorland, but I definitely will later in the day today. Now, cameraman Dan, do you have some shout outs for us? I sure do. All right, let's hear it. Hello, Mason and Matthew, Jackson and Tony from Cali. A special shout out to Patty and Janet, and hello to Brennan. Head to the School of Croc Facebook group to see Jeffrey's Crocodilian Checklist and Violet's Wings, so cute. Also, some lovely photos from you. Check out our School of Croc t-shirt models, Amelia, Kendall and, Madigan, and Madeline in Michigan, and Finn and Nolan. All right, so today's gonna be a super special episode. You guys are gonna see more than one animal today, and uh, I think you're gonna love it. Here's a little hint. It's raining snakes! Hallelujah! Whoa. If it does start raining, we might have to end this feed, but we're trying to get you guys outside with us for as long as we can. But if it starts raining, don't be surprised if we have to go, go dark super fast. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to introduce you to the superintendent of the School of Crack, Mr. Brandon Fisher, and one of our school board members, Mr. Donnie Allarelli. Yeah! yeah. Good morning, everybody. Oh. All right. So last week we did an episode on venomous snakes. We had the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake and the Pygmy Rattlesnake. Today we wanted to show you some of our non-venomous... <laughs> that, that, oh, um... Uh, oh, no, uh, I'm good. I'm just kidding. Okay. Don't listen. Not, Look, time out. Time out. Snakes. I got a time out. <laughs> Cameraman Dan gets a little nervous around snakes. <laughs> yes. Like Savannah doesn't like the birds, Cameraman Dan gets nervous with the snakes. So don't scare Cameraman Dan. I'm, we I'm keep sorry. Six feet, Brandon. I'm just so kidding. If that thing gets you, you're on your own. You're on, on your own. own. That's not own. good, okay? Even own. if we didn't, I wouldn't help you. <laughs> yeah. Our non venomous snakes. Guys, these are some of our constrictors. And the snake I have crawling around on my face right now, this is Casper. And he's known as a reticulated python. And even more specifically, check out his color. Look how awesome color white and black spotches. He's known as a cow cow reticulated python that's the type of pattern that he has right here so he was bred to be this kind of color now reticulated pythons come from southeast asia and they are the largest species of snake in the world meaning the longest they can get up to 33 feet long crazy this guy's still young still awesome and donnie over here has got an even awesome snake too yes well so you guys know the reticulated python not so well known this snake's name i'm sure everybody out there knows it the anaconda the anaconda this is a very very popular snake uh not a lot of people know there's several different species of anacondas and i'm not going to tell you how many because i want to answer some of the questions you guys have but check her out that is an anaconda Mainly aquatic. They like to hang out in the water more than the reticulated pythons do. And let's stretch her out so you guys can see how giant this thing is. Now, Isaiah wants to know why they wrap around things. Uh, they're constrictors. So th not only do they wrap around their food. So let's say an anaconda, a reticulated python, were to grab a hold of a mouse or, or a rodent or something like that. What they do is they start to squeeze. And every time that mouse takes a breath, and lets that air out, then the python will, will squeeze harder just to make sure they can't take a bigger breath. They also hang on for security. These guys don't have hands or feet, so the snake doesn't want to fall to the ground. So they wrap their tail around, and they'll just kind of hang from trees like that and, uh, you know, just to make sure they're not falling down and getting hurt. Yes. Wow. Yeah, awesome. Now, some differences between pythons and boas because people get them confused all the time, okay? Neat little fact. Pythons are considered old world, meaning Africa, Asia, Australia, that side of the planet there, whereas boas are considered new world, North, Central, and South America. Some other differences that they have as well is how they have their babies. Yes. Most boas actually give live birth, so the babies come out alive, not oh. hatch out of egg, whereas all pythons are hatched out of an egg, which is really, really cool. Wow. And you see them flicking their tongue right now, just like those venomous snakes, those rattlesnakes, they're flicking their tongue, they're sensing what is going on outside, they're tasting the air, and they breathe through their nostrils, and these guys also have heat-sensing pits too, other holes, so they see in thermal imaging. Now, yeah. not all snakes are gonna have those heat pits. Now, Ken wants to know, are they from Florida now? So, pythons are not necessarily considered from florida we do have a species of python that we're going to show you here in just a minute that can be found here because it is invasive people have released them out in the wild and they started populating now the reticulated python 
There might be a few that have maybe escaped. Somebody had them as a pet and they're out there, but they're not as populated as the one we're going to show you here in just a minute. Now, Donnie's Anaconda right there is known as the yellow anaconda. Yes. And these guys are the second long, biggest species of anaconda in the world. Yes. They, how big do they get, Donnie? So the yellow anaconda here gets about 10 to 14 feet. Females get way bigger than the males do because they got to hold all those live babies inside of them and then, you know, give birth to live young. Mm, so the yes. females get a little bit bigger than the males do. And this is a female here. So if she's lucky, she'll be 14 feet. Now, Michelle wants to know what's the biggest thing they could eat. Big, like right now or when they get full grown? Let's say right now and then when they're full grown. Okay, so right now, I mean, you don't want to feed a snake something that's too uh, drastically larger than the thickest part of their body. So something that's about as big around as the snake is a, is a good, easy prey for them to digest. When this snake gets full grown, or let's even talk about a green anaconda, the biggest species of anaconda, when that thing is 20 something feet long, they could take down small deer. Huh. I mean, they could potentially uh, strangle and eat a human. Wow, yes. so on that yeah. note, Zachy wants to know, are they good pets? So honestly, listen, there's some species of snake out there that make good pets. People want snakes. They got to have them, but you got to have a real passion for these guys. So you got to know what you're getting yourself into. And there's three things that we tell folks all the time for any kind of pet that you want to get research. You want to do, you want to know how big they get, how long they live and what do they eat. And you got to have that research and you got to, you know, have that passion for them because you might get yourself way in too deep. And then what ends up happening is then you've got this big snake that you can't take care of. And now you got to find a home for it. And that's the whole reason why some of these snakes have been released in the wild. And real quick question. Go ahead. Archer wants to know the difference between venomous and poisonous snakes because his daddy does not know. Oh, okay. let me handle this one. Okay. So Let's just talk about venom and poison, okay? So venom is something that comes from an animal, you know, whether it's in the ocean or on land, that's injected. Venom is injected through the fangs of, let's say, a rattlesnake. Poison is ingested, meaning uh, you have to eat it or you have to absorb it through your skin or through your eye ducts. So venom is injected and poison is ingested. So the difference would be, uh, let's say this was a rattlesnake. He would be a venomous animal. And then let's say you have the poison dart frog. The poison dart frog is a poisonous animal only because if animals eat them, they'll die from it. So venom is injected, poison is ingested. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. And talking about those snakes that we have a problem with in Florida and the whole reason of getting them as a pet and not knowing what you're doing, Savannah's coming in right now with Whoa! our job. Whoa, Savannah, what do you have? This is the Mac Daddy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so this is Kitty. Kitty is our gigantic Burmese python. And these are the snakes that are invasive oh, in the state of Kitty's Florida. Kitty's right next to me. Now, Kitty's really sweet. And no, she does not eat kittens. But she oh. absolutely oh. could <laughs> if that was... If, if there was one in her way. Now, if you guys want to talk a little bit about, uh, you got a this? About Burmese python. <laughs> here, let me come down and I'll, I'll grab the end of the tail here because we can stretch out here, okay? Because Kitty's really, really big. Oh my goodness. Really, really big. She's okay? a sweetheart. Girl. Oh my gosh, trying to got put her. her on the box. I got her right there, okay? So Kitty is big, okay? She's our largest Burmese python we have here at the park. She was donated to us. She was somebody's pet. They couldn't take care of her anymore, and that was the right thing for that uh, that owner to do to bring her here to Gatorland. Now, we try to take in as many animals as we can, and that's part of our conservation efforts that we have, part of our Gatorland Global as well. But, of course, we're not going to be able to take in everyone. But with Kitty, she is awesome. We've taken her out to schools. We've, we've done different programs, and she lives a good life here at Gatorland. All these guys do, and you can see the differences between these guys. Anacondas and pythons. Anacondas have a more short, kind of stoutier head, whereas pythons are a little longer, all right? But really cool colors. Now, Kitty is an example of what a normal Burmese python looks like, yes. color-wise. Whereas the retic Casper, he's bred to look like this color. The yellow anaconda, that is the normal color of what they look like. And people breed these snakes to be in all kinds of colors, different sizes, yeah. different shapes, different which, patterns. Which is, which is part of the problem. You know, yeah. these things are so popular because of how beautiful they are yeah. that everybody wants to own one. But when a snake like the one Brandon has gets 20, 30 feet long, not a lot of people know how to deal with something like that, which is why they're illegal to own unless you have a, the, the proper permits. And, you know, like Brandon was saying about Kitty here, this is the snake you're going to see down in the Everglades. They're going to look just like 
Kitty. As big as Kitty, if not a little bit bigger, now, because they got a ton of animals to prey on. And they don't belong there. They do not belong no, and there. And what they do is they eat our natural wildlife down in Florida. Yes. Like a snake this size could eat several baby alligators, several baby mm. American crocodiles. And those are animals that we need here in the state of Florida because they're the ones that belong. Now, and not only are they eating the alligators and crocodiles, they're eating what the alligators and crocodiles eat, too. Absolutely. So they're messing up the whole ecosystem Absolutely. down there. And it's, yep. a, and it's a big problem, and that's why there's all those laws and regulations to own them, to have them, and so on. So you really got to do that research before you get any kind so of So as pet. a reminder, if you have any pet that you don't want anymore, don't just let it go into the wild. No, don't just let the pet go. Look. Call us up. Call us here at Gatorland. If we have space for it, we will take it happily. It's what we do. We love to do it. If we don't have space for it, we'll try to put you guys in contact with people who will, you know, take the animal, give it a good home. All right, All Donnie, right, Brandon, thank you. You're welcome. It is pouring down rain now here. But look at Kitty. It is pouring down <laughs> rain now here at Gatorland, but Rain or Shine School of Croc will be with you again tomorrow morning. Don't forget, you can check out our Gatorland Vlog Live YouTube if you want a little more dangerous content this afternoon on Gatorland Vlog's YouTube channel. Thanks to everyone that's bought their School of Croc t-shirts. We didn't even know that was going to be a thing. You guys demanded it. We filled your demand when it comes to School of Croc t-shirts. Make sure you check out our merchandise link, and we will see you again tomorrow on the School of Croc. Same Croc time, same Croc channel. Bye!